we're at the Energy Innovation Summit where we're about to enjoy an intimate conversation between Stephen Chu and Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates. The combination of photovoltaics and energy storage, inexpensive, robust uh, photovoltaics and energy storage is something that will go viral in the same way that uh, uh, cell phones went viral, not only in the developed world, but in the developing world. Perhaps the first thing you get in a, in a developing country, if you have any spare cash, is you get a cell phone. And a cell phone leapfrogged past uh, a transmission telephone network. We see photovoltaics and batteries as leapfrogging past the normal grid. And then you can bring this power to small villages, to places where you can read at night. Uh, to where you can run a refrigerator that can keep your medicines safe, to where you can run things to pump water for irrigation. And so we see this as a huge potential worldwide. I do worry that people think, A, that some of the parts of the economics, like storage, reliability, where it can be located, that people underestimate the difficulty of getting the breakthroughs, and they, did, they underestimate how long it'll take uh, you know, which is why, in my, in my view, uh, energy research in the U.S. across the board is greatly underfunded. You know, I'd say by a factor of two. I'd say that about RPE. I'd say that about the Office of Science. Uh, the Secretary has a hard time saying making extreme statements <laughs> like that. But I, you know, I'm I'm more independent, and I I think it it's very it's crazy how little we're funding uh, this energy stuff. There's no clear mapping between the amount you spend on R&D and what you get out. You know, for all we know, there could be a four or five companies that are, are, will come out with the, the pieces that are necessary that already have plenty of funds. I think it's more likely that the underfunding is delaying the pace of progress. You know, remember, the failure rates here are going to be well over 90%. This is a very complex uh, set of technologies and so we need literally thousands of companies to be trying these things to increase the odds that we'll have the 10 or 20 approaches that will, will get us the magic solution. But there are nuclear designs, including ours mm -hmm. on paper, that can compete on that basis. Now getting a new nuclear design totally figured out, proving out the safety, getting the demo plant built, that's very hard. But we have some TerraPower you know, very high risk company, but the national laboratories, particularly Argonne, Idaho, are helping us with this stuff. The universities are helping with this stuff. The intellectual power of what's been done in the nuclear space should allow for some radical designs that meet the very tough requirements that people should have there. So it should be one of the places we pursue. And, you know, it's amazing to see, at least on paper, what, what, what is possible. And it's all supercomputers. I mean, without supercomputers, yeah. we, we could talk about this. We can take our thing, we can run, you know, 100-foot waves over it, we lava, hurricanes. Uh, you know, we can test what, what it's going to look like in the worst, worst case. America is uh, the most innovative country in the world. We can lead in these new technologies that the world will want. And bear that in mind. And so, it, in a certain sense, it's ours to lose. Uh, let's not blow it. Overall, we need to be willing to take risk, and there are going to be sort of anti-cylindra stories, that is, things that paid off very, very uh, dramatically. Uh, so I, you know, I'm very supportive that we put more into this ener energy space. I'd, I'd like to see it double, so clearly I'm a, a fan of, uh, of risk-taking.